Hello and welcome to another episode of Bergen Stages. For those of you joining us for the very first time, Bergen Stages is a behind the scene look at Bergen Stages, which is our student theater here at Bergen Community College. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the show The Mousetrap, which opens on October 28th. And I'm pleased to have as our guests uh, John Ehrenberg, who is our set designer, scenic artist, and Marie Natali, who is our costume designer. Uh, and later on in the show, we will also visit with Ken Bonifons, who is the director for our production of The Mousetrap. Um, the Mousetrap is one of the longest running shows in history. It has been running in London uh, for over 50 years, and we're pleased to have it premiere here at Bergen Community College. So I'll start with talking to you guys just a little bit about what you do for a living and how you got to do what you do. So John, you are our set designer mm -hmm. as well as our scenic artist. So what uh, is your background in scenic art and set design? Uh, well, I... It's a long story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a long time ago in a different world, I, um, I was put into the art room when I was a kid and, and they said, we're going to put you here because we need to put you here for, uh, for medical reasons. So I had an extra art class. And from there, I was interested in, in theater. My whole family is interested in theater. And I knew by the age of 11 that I wanted to do theater. Hmm. So um, in college, I studied uh, scenic art and I studied set design. And I've been doing it ever since. Great. And what's the difference between scenic art and set design, just for our audience? Well, understand. a scenic artist is actually the person that paints the set, the, uh, all of the different kinds of, of uh, different patterns that go on the set, wallpaper, stenciling, painting wood grain, um, painting um, textures. And a set designer is, actually comes up with the shape of the set and mm -hmm. what it will look like and how it will work for the director. Mm -hmm. And sometimes our audiences don't realize that what they're looking at is recycled. We've used that, that background before, mm -hmm. we've used those walls before, but painted in a different way. And so your job as scenic artist is to give it a new vibrant look for this particular show, depending on what the show is. That's right. And uh, it does save us a lot of, of time and, and effort in, in reusing those things. And there's actually a point where before we paint it, where we can see six or seven different shows at once mm -hmm. that we've done before and it's right. kind of a nice memory <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, until we get a chance to get in and paint and and make it look like the show we're trying to do now. Great. And we'll get into specifics in a, uh, a second. Let's just talk to Marie Natali, our costume designer. So okay. Marie, what is your background? Well, I studied fashion design actually. I started in fashion design at Ursuline College. It's a uh, women's college in Cleveland, Ohio. Actually Beachwood, Ohio. And I uh, also studied historic costuming. And while I was studying at this college, the dean came to our class and asked if uh, someone would be interested in doing a show in the local theater. And uh, she came up to me because I actually was an adult student. And, uh, and I thought at first, you know, do I really want to do this? Although I had, you know, had some theater classes and I had actually acted on stage. And I did love it. I had that already with it, me. So it was, um, the show was called She Loves Me, mm -hmm. 1930 show, which Great I love, love that show. period. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had actually auditioned for it. And mm -hmm. I was going to be in it. And I thought, gee, I wonder if the director would say, you know, uh, that'll be a little too much. And this, that was my first show. And I went there and the uh, director said, look, if you think you can do it, she said, I'd love to have you in the show as well. And so my first show, I not only was in it, <laughs> I costumed it. Nice. And I didn't know what I was getting myself into, but when they walked out on stage, I just, because in between my scene, I would have to sit with the director and as we were, it was tech week, and I'm watching everybody come out and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, they look just like a 1930s movie. Mm -hmm. And that's what we try to do. Mm -hmm. We try mm -hmm. to stay true to the period. Mm -hmm. And they walked out. And I was in love, and I've been doing it ever since. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great. And so you said uh, historical costuming was part of your study? Well, or, yes, or historical? historical costuming at the uh, museum in Cleveland. And actually, we they had a great collection of, like, Coco Chanel, mm. just uh, mm. uh, magnificent. And it was all restoration. Mm -hmm. And then after we restored, like, a th gowns from the 1850s, it, it was just magnificent. Uh, they would have a big you know, opening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it was great to be part of that, but also 
knowing that the the fabrics of that time period, how to restore them, learning how to you know maintain them, the rebeading of mm. of uh, these gorgeous costumes, it was just such a, an amazing mm -hmm. lesson. And so I um, just you know fell in love with with all of it. And I've always loved the the twenties, thirties, forties period mm -hmm. in particular. Mm -hmm. and, and this show being in the late 40s, as I said, we try to stay very true to the period. And working with the students in these time periods is always interesting because everybody wears like the hip hugger jeans and <laughs> you come in and you give the guys pants, you know, that they have fit the on their waist. in the front <laughs> with, the, with the cuffs. And they come out and, and they have their suit jacket on the, and then the pants are here. I mm -hmm. said, no, 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 you ha the belt goes up here. <laughs> it's called a waist. And so <laughs> I solved it because the minute I give them suspenders, they're in heaven. Oh, this looks so great. They love that look. Mm -hmm. So that's terrific. And then, you know, we uh, cover the total look of that period, um, the, you know, from the hair, the accessories. And um, I got such a kick out of the, the I was talking about hair to to the girls and, and the guys. Mm -hmm. and, and I said to the one fella, you know how the guys, they all have their hair gelled today. And right, right. So I looked at him and I said, um, okay, so, you know, this is how we'll do the girls' hair and, and let's talk about your hair and uh, like this. And I said to him, so which way do you part your part. hair? And he <laughs> says to me, what's a part? part? I said, what's a part? My part is. <laughs> what's a part? <laughs> and it's Wren. like, you know, it's up here gelled mm -hmm. and it's like a part? <laughs> I've never funny. heard of a part. I thought that was so precious. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it is so. learning and it's such a great opportunity here at Bergen Community College that when we when we do our show, working backstage, you do get to work with students. Uh, oh, and that's a great that's opportunity. Great. And sure and learning what a costume is and, and that it actually is closing, clothing from the 1940s, mm -hmm. uh, not just a costume, uh, right. it's, it's period clothing. So let, let's look, John, back at the set. Um, this is The Mousetrap. Right. It's a murder mystery thriller. It is. Um, what challenges have you met trying to put this one up in our in the space we're putting it up? Well, the, the space is, is very small um, compared to our big theater. Which is the Interhall Lab Theater. Right, mm -hmm. and and it, the challenge was having enough room to for all of the doors and um, all of the action to take place. There's uh, 10 or 12 in the cast right. and um, it can get crowded pretty quickly and one of the first things that I did was a traffic pattern mm -hmm. for the director Ken mm -hmm. just to make sure that nobody got caught in corners and meaning traffic pattern the way actors will the move way around the actors all this furniture move. and up in steps and all that kind of stuff exactly yeah. and um, the challenge I had here was that it, it needs to be a little mysterious it can't just be just uh, a few doors and a window um, and this takes place let's just get back uh, mm -hmm. to the nitty gritties this takes place place at Monkswell Manor and right. what is Monkswell Manor? Monkswell Manor is a bed and breakfast. Um, it's taken over by the, the family and it's been in the family for generations mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's not exactly up to par mm -hmm. on being a beautiful bed and breakfast but I think it would be if they had time. Uh, so the guests when they come are a little um, concerned that it's not prim and proper. What they were used to. So it's right. Molly and Giles Ralston mm -hmm. who are this young married couple who have uh, inherited this, this, this house right. and now are converting it to a bed and breakfast. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. And um, one of the other challenges we're, we're facing is that it all takes place in a blizzard. Of and course. It's Agatha Christie. <laughs> you know, and the phone will go out. Exactly. And, exactly. Uh, so uh, in, in the small space, it's, it was a challenge to uh, have windows and doors and snow and have a place for everyone to, you know, it's really got to look like they're coming in from outside. So that was the challenge mm -hmm. in, in meeting that. And um, the, the one thing I did in the set was to create uh, two very large arches mm -hmm. that um, gives the actor a separation from the main room to to kind of a hallway and it adds a little bit of mystery as to who may be coming down the so hallway. So they can be lurking back there watching what's going on uh, on the hallway there. Great, right. great. So let me move into costumes a little bit. So what were the challenges, Marie, that you found with costuming this particular murder mystery? <laughs> Well, I don't want to give anything away. Don't give but, anything away. <laughs> but, but you can Because everybody it up, right? is a suspect. Let, let me put That's it that the way. best part. You know, That's Agatha the best part. Would do Everyone it that way. is a suspect. And, uh, yeah. and how do they become a suspect? You will find out when you see the show. <laughs> <laughs> Good. But uh, basically, it's just uh, having everybody, um, you know, obviously they're entering from a blizzard. So it all takes place in one weekend, too, right? Or just uh, a couple of days. Oh, just, yeah, a couple yeah, of days. Two days. Two days. Two days. And so it. 
really it's just ha making sure that they all come in with their coats, their hats, their gloves. And, uh, you know, there's always that little part where someone drops a mysterious item that is found and there's a mm. clue supposedly, mm -hmm. those type of things. So as a costumer, you, when I read the play, I'm reading it differently than others. I'm picking up on everything they wear, what they take off, where they put it, you know, what's in their purse, do they need a handkerchief, mm -hmm. all these little things. And so... Um, a, pocket, with, a pocket to put something, you know, they've exactly. got a, a cigarette and lighter, you know, we have to make sure right. that that coat has a, a pocket right, to put a right. gun in. <laughs> so uh -huh. when it's a mystery, you know, uh, the uh, clothing are part of that mystery as well. Mm -hmm. And so that said, in this show, that's really the uh, one little challenge. But I, I think and there's a class distinction between some of these people. Too. I mean, you've got uh, police officers, yes. and you've got yes. uh, working class people, and you also have mm -hmm. these very elite people that are coming to stay there. Exactly. So you want to show the, the difference in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the difference in, in their personalities, you know. And also, because it is England, it is uh, post-war, uh, and the fashions have now taken a different look from the wartime, mm -hmm. uh, that's also reflected. And because it's England, it's also reflected in that they're very conservative compared to America or let's say even Paris. They're, they just, they're, for the one in other words, a more stodgy look there. Right, right. And uh, so we, we give them that look, you know. So each person, you know, and I really read that person. I try to get to know them. And, and it's always such a good feeling when they put on their costume and say, I feel like this person. Mm -hmm. That's great, mm -hmm. you know. Which even, is wonderful. And the hair does the same thing. They would the never hair. have worn their hair that way, exactly. but they're right. doing it for that first time. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. it's really interesting to see them, you know, evolve into that character and feel that way because of their costume as well. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you know, our lighting designer is like my best friend, too, because... The lighting just gives Rich Sesson is doing yes. the lighting design for this particular yeah. show, and it does have that, exactly. uh, you know, it can turn exactly. a beautiful costume into a very ugly costume very quickly with mm -hmm. the wrong color exactly. on it. So, so uh, lighting is so great and uh, so important, mm -hmm. and of course the set is magnificent. Right. And you kind of work together in this too, just speaking already about coats and colors hats and all that and, kind of and stuff and, and colors. That's right. Um, we started with a production meeting, and the production meeting was to talk about mm -hmm. what colors mm -hmm. uh, John was thinking about uh, doing the set with wallpaper and all that, which right. of course plays heavily into what Marie wants to do with the design, exactly. right? Exactly. Right. We stay very close in touch, and I have to say we have a great, mm -hmm. great team. We, we sure have do. an excellent team. We, we um, just work yeah. well together, and we are just very fortunate to to ha be able to do this. That's you know? right. And, and yeah. we love what we do, yeah. and it, yeah. I hope it shows. Uh, and you've got an assistant in this particular show. I do. Uh, uh, I have a young Paula. lady named Paula Hoffman who will be working with me this year, and I'm just delighted to have her. She's very creative great. and a great seamstress. At, Going forward, we have a lot of big productions coming up, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's for I sure. am very fortunate. That's good. <laughs> and, and then you talked about and other students are going to be helping with hair and makeup a lot. Uh, yes. Have this uh, opportunity. And to work it's in hair and great. Makeup. You know, I, I love it when the students, you know, want to come in and, and, and participate in any way they want to. Uh, you know, it's their show. Mm -hmm. And I want them to be feel happy and part comfortable of and it's part great. of everything that they look at that and say I did on. that or and I painted right. that which that's is right. exactly yeah. you which know is, which is and, and they feel so good about it and that's what we're all about right is right. Yeah, helping yeah. them learn so, John just wrapping up what yeah. we were talking about today uh, any other points that you uh, wanted to talk about this well uh, I, I think uh, challenges I think I think we talked about challenges uh, except the one thing that I, I do want to point out is the furniture, mm -hmm. and, and uh, we are fortunate to have a source for furniture that really completes the set, right. that it, it, it really does make it look like these people own this furniture. Mm -hmm. And that's what we always go after. Right, is, right. A is very that lived in feeling. And it's had this feeling. You've, you've started working on the set very early, so it really has this right. great lived in feeling already. Right, we do. Um, so I want to thank you guys for being a part of this. I go so quickly. Thank we you. have so much more to talk <laughs> about. Uh, but but uh, thank you, Marie Natali. Thank uh, you. John thank Ehrenberg, you, our set designer, scenic artist, costume designer. Also want to point out, Dean Matson is doing our great sound uh, for this particular show, which there's a lot that's of wind right. and a lot of mysterious oh, yeah. noise that totally. happen as well mm -hmm. so uh, we can't do it without a great production team and it's great to have you guys a part of it as always so thank you again for coming uh, we'll be right back and we'll be talking to our director Ken Bonifons stay tuned from intimate black box performances in the Ender Hall Lab Theater to full-scale musical productions in the Anna Maria Saccone Theater, come to Bergen Community College at 400 Paramus Road in Paramus New Jersey 
For tickets or more information, call the box office at 201-447-7428 or visit us at tickets.bergen.edu. We'll be seeing you on Bergen Stages. Thank you for giving me blood. Thank you for giving me shelter. Thank you for saving my life. Support the Red Cross and change a life, starting with your own. The odds of this daughter of a clergyman spending 11 weeks at number one on the U.S. singles charts? One in 19 million. The odds of going on to win six Grammy Awards? One in 1.4 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 150. I'm Tony Braxton. And I encourage you to learn the signs of autism at AutismSpeaks.org. Hi, and welcome back to Bergen Stages. Today, we've been talking about the upcoming production of The Mousetrap, and we've been speaking with uh, some of the behind-the-scenes people. So now we're going to look at one more very important part of this equation of the collaborative art artists, and that is the director, Ken Bonifon. So I want to welcome Ken to Bergen Stages and just ask you a few questions about the show. How's it going, I guess, is the first one. Ah, going great. It's going really well. Um, I will say that before I started the production, my opinion on the script was uh, somewhat tepid. Uh, yeah, I liked it, it was well made, etc. but the more I've gotten to work on it, the more I've gotten to appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that's still kind of amazing to me is this is the longest running play in theater history. It's now at over 24,000 performances. Wow. Wow and has been running continuously since 1952. Mm -hmm. uh, why? What's in this play that makes it so popular? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it was probably marketed very nicely in London uh, and still is because uh, every year there's a change of cast. Even though it keeps going, there's a change of cast mm -hmm. and they've made a big deal out of it. So the theater world kind of celebrates this annual changeover. Uh, but what I've discovered in working on it is it's fun. It's interesting fun. Mm -hmm. um, uh, with the murder mystery, of course, there's always the who did this and who and why right. and how right. did that piece together. So you have to pay attention to it. Um, and that makes it fun because the audience is involved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they're trying to figure it out. And they're, they're trying to figure for it all out. The, the, it's like they're keeping a scorecard trying to find out what's going exactly, on. Exactly, uh -huh. exactly. I mean, why did he say that? Uh, and sometimes, I hope, it even turns into the imagination of, I saw that look he gave mm -hmm. when she said, when he might not have intended it at all, but that's part of the fun. These kind of red herrings that kind of get thrown in exactly. there. We didn't mean for that to happen, but there it was. But that's there right. it is, yeah. yeah. So uh, it's being fun that way, and I think part of the enjoyment of the show will be um, uh, guessing, wondering, figuring out why this is so popular. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It just keeps going on and on and on. Right, people do keep coming back and some yeah. to try to find out what they missed when they saw it the yeah. last time. They Which go, of course oh, is always that? true about a work of art. Mm -hmm. If you go back, you know, you discover more. Right, right. But they enjoy coming back. Uh, I, I think at the beginning in trying to explain to the cast at casting time, uh, I use the analogy of it, it's this generation's Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> you know, they all know it's the, a cult thing the to roles. Do. Yes, mm -hmm. it's a cult thing to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. Now I'm sure it's changed to something different. I'm showing my age by saying <laughs> Rocky Horror, but, uh, but... But the general idea is there. Yeah. Well, that's great. And, and speaking of the cast, because you're not only teaching them about Agatha Christie and murder mysteries and the, and the genre, but you're also teaching them about 1947 and some of the things that went on in post... Has that been a challenge with yeah. this group of young uh, people? Not a challenge because... Um, I somehow think that uh, coming along with the territory of being a student is curiosity. Uh, so th they'll be more curious about what happens in here, but very accepting of the information I give them mm -hmm. or that they receive. Uh, 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 
which of course puts the pressure on me to give them accurate right, information. Right, right, right. But um, yeah, uh, so they're interested and they're curious about the period. Uh, I think when they get costumes on, mm -hmm. a whole different persona takes over and they, they tend to understand more. Right, right. But even now in talking about period and what things affect the period, for example, the telephone, uh, many of them, if not all, uh, they've never even seen an old fashioned dial. black <laughs> dial phone, phone <laughs> that was standard in all of our mm -hmm. houses. Uh, so even that is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, the other day we had a discussion about whether or not ballpoint pens were in use uh, in 1952. So it's an incredible uh, discovery process, which, yeah. is, which is really, yeah. really kind of fun. And it works both ways, mm -hmm. I think. Oh, nice, nice, yeah. nice. And how, was it challenging casting the show, or did you get a good audition among uh, people? Audition? I think I could have cast this play with the people who showed up at auditions. I could have cast this play at least three times. Wow. Uh, there's a lot of talent it's, here. At it's amazing Bergen. that a lot of people don't realize it. That's yeah. So, so that's and even even in those three casts, I could have cast it. I could have put two casts, two different ethnic casts. Wow. Uh, which is fabulous, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I hope in the future they'll keep coming back and we'll do great. more yeah. to involve them. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of talent here. It's it's really nice. And so you got them assembled. So you got the people you wanted. I got the that. people I wanted, and um, of course that's always the chance of did I choose the right people, and <laughs> right. maybe I went off. But no, this time <laughs> they seem to be right on the button. Mm -hmm. uh, They're a terrific group and very enthusiastic, mm -hmm. uh, which is more than half the battle. But we yeah. talked earlier about the challenge of of working with students and classes, and you've run into some of these obstacles uh, along the way yes. that I don't think our audience ever knows about. Um, they see the final product, but they don't realize what the director yeah. has to, to work with. What are some of these? Uh, well, well, first of all, besides the cast, you, you already talked with John and, um, and Marie. Marie. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you, you know, the idea of it being collaborative and hopefully the pieces will all fit together when it's production time. Um, but uh, with the cast, it's the same thing. I mean, it takes a little bit of time. The time becomes crucial because uh, they're learners. Uh, uh, there's at least two, if not more, of this eight-member cast mm -hmm. who have never been on the stage before. Wow. So, I mean, just considering that is a, is a big thing. Mm -hmm. These students are very willing to take chances, so it's fun to work with them. Where the problems usually come in is they're students. Right. This is a commuter college. So many of them have jobs besides their schoolwork. Uh, many of them have obligations at home, whether it's you know looking after younger siblings mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and being students, they have classes, sometimes classes at night. When you like to rehearse. When yeah. I like to rehearse. Right, right. And if they have classes at night, it makes for particularly difficult times when that actor is not there. So having all eight of them at the same time is... Somewhat of a rarity. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, not that they don't try. Sure, and, sure. Uh, uh, we're very careful in the casting process to make sure we get their schedules first. Mm -hmm. Let us know what you're involved mm -hmm. with, if it can be changed or not. Uh, classes, for example, sometimes a, a, a kid may be in a class where the teacher has more than one section. And they can just, instead of do the evenings, they can get up at 8 in the morning and take that same class exactly. with the same teacher. Sure, exactly. and swap that around, which is always uh, a, a great thing if the teacher will allow that to Will happen. allow so it to happen, cool. yeah. So, you know, there, there's some ways to kind of uh, temper the problem, mm -hmm. but it's a problem. Yeah. So, on top of this problem, you've also got one of the shortest rehearsal periods here at Bergen Community <laughs> College. You do this in five and a half weeks. A lot of them take seven weeks, and I know the yeah. musical can take eight to nine weeks, but you've done this in five and a half weeks. Yeah. Which is tough in itself. It, it is, mm -hmm. but you know, somehow because I know it's five and a half weeks, my focus and my concentration is mm, so at rehearsals I tend to work intensely for a shorter period of time mm -hmm. than to be able to 
be more relaxed about it. You know, it's got to be done, so yeah. you just get it done. And yeah. uh, with this cast, it's being nice because they seem to have caught on uh, that when we start, we are working. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it also helps because we have a very nice stage manager mm -hmm. and assistant director. Good, good, uh, great, they great, keep right. us Stephanie Howard, Victoria Lopez, yeah. Right, are, are they keep us corralled, you. Good, you know. Good, good. Yeah. So now we're at that point of heading towards opening night. What do you focus on now for the next couple of weeks? Uh, we finished blocking the play, the movements. Um, and now it's, um, it's number one, hopefully finding more in these characters than the students have already found, mm -hmm. uh, adding dimensions to it, mm -hmm. layering it. Mm -hmm. uh, also, from my point of view, as these students develop this way, I think I have to watch to see that the elements of the play are clear and coming through to the audience. The story is still there. Didn't the get story, lost. the yeah, narrative, yeah. 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 Um, you know, it could be as simple if somebody mumbles a word and we didn't catch that word, mm -hmm. we've lost a whole sequence of things. Right. So watching for that is important. In, in this particular play, there are eight characters. One of them is a murderer. We don't know, supposedly, which one <laughs> is the murderer. Mm -hmm. But what's nice about the play is they're all suspects. So you have to pay attention to each one of them. Sometimes you get actors uh, who <laughs> are naturally suspicious. <laughs> I know it's that one, I could tell. Uh -huh. uh, but sometimes there's the opposite. There's somebody that you look at and say, Never. I could never believe mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she or he would do that. Right, right. So uh, in these last uh, couple of weeks, it's to try to help build up suspicion, suspense. On everybody. On yeah. everybody. Oh, great, yeah, great, so that great. people will wonder about everybody in the show. And then we get into costumes and we get on the set and the lighting and the sound all come together to make for a wonderful... Magic. Magic. The magic will start happening. <laughs> magic happens. Great, yeah. great. And that's yeah. the exciting part of it. I think this is the part that... As a director, you really like it because you can work on the, the yeah. nuts and bolts of it all. Yeah, the, the, and to the, be the... honest with you, Jim, I like the rehearsal period much more than the performance, even though, you, of course, you're working towards it. In the rehearsal period, it's up here. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, you know what you want to have happen, how it should look and feel. And sometimes the magic works, sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, but during the rehearsal period, you still have this vision of what you're going after, and it has not been spoiled. It's only been enhanced. Oh, that's great. So I love the rehearsal period. That's great. That's great. So, yeah. So you've fallen in love with Agatha Christie now. I love Agatha Christie. <laughs> <laughs> and how could you not? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, what's interesting is with the students, some of them don't know who she is. Okay. But when you start mentioning names like Hercule Poirot, and, you know, uh, and PBS maybe, shows these kind of things too, but yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe they've caught them on TV mm -hmm. because of PBS. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of that is just missed. On the other hand, there's one of them in there, uh, in the cast, who is, who's read more Agatha Christie than wow. I or <laughs> most people I know. Mm -hmm. He just got involved with it. Mm -hmm. and, and what a fascinating woman she is. And it's great to have yeah. cast members that, that are that interested. Yeah. I, I think they know the board game Clue, and so they kind of liken it to uh, yeah. you know, Mr. Green in the library with the pipe, so they kind of ha have this kind yeah. of a yeah. feeling. Of and one of the great things about Agatha Christie, too, that, that uh, has increased my appreciation of her, is she's a noted professional. She was so professional about her writing mm -hmm. and uh, having things ready on deadline, et cetera, et cetera. All of her publishers loved her. Uh, yeah, she was an so interesting So her work lady. is very complete and very... Very complete, yeah. very compact, very mm -hmm. consistent. And uh, I would challenge anyone in the audience to find inconsistencies. You know how sometimes we go to the movie and say, aha! <laughs> <laughs> you know. So that's the challenge that we make for our audience there. Yeah. Um, on the screen is, are the dates for our shows and the performance times. We do have new matinees uh, this year. Uh, they're going to be at 2 o'clock instead of our regular 3 o'clock um, because we're doing two shows on every Saturday. So if you look at the screen now, um, we have the poster up uh, with all those times and dates that we will be performing. But it opens on Friday, October the 28th. 
will run for two weekends. Ken, I want to thank you so much for being our guest thank today. You. It goes I'm by so, so doggone quick, um, <laughs> but we can't wait to see the show uh, and to try to figure out all these uh, little clues that yeah. will be along the way there. Yeah, I'll look so for them. Thanks again for uh, joining us with Bergen Stages. Uh, we hope to see you again soon, and we'll see you in the theater.